August 5, 1972. USS Albacore was decommissioned at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard after 19 years of experimental operations. There was no dramatic final mission, no combat victories to celebrate, no enemy vessels sunk. During her entire career, Albacore never carried operational torpedoes. She never tracked a Soviet submarine. She never fired a weapon in anger. By traditional measures of naval warfare, USS Albacore accomplished nothing. Yet her influence on submarine warfare exceeded every combat submarine in history. Every modern submarine worldwide, American, Russian, British, French, Chinese, Indian, uses technologies pioneered aboard this unarmed research vessel. This is the story of how one experimental submarine changed naval warfare forever without participating in a single battle. The paradox of USS Albacore began with her design mission. When the Navy authorized her construction in 1952, they weren't building a warship. They were building a floating laboratory designed to answer a single question. What is the fastest possible shape for a submerged submarine? The question seemed academic. Submarine warfare had always prioritized stealth and endurance over speed. Fast submarines were nice to have, but not strategically essential. What the Navy didn't realize was that answering this seemingly academic question would revolutionize underwater warfare. The David Taylor Model Basin had conducted extensive testing of scale models in water tunnels and reached a surprising conclusion. The traditional long cylindrical submarine hull, the design that had dominated since submarines were invented, was hydrodynamically terrible when fully submerged. The flat deck created enormous drag. The sharp bow generated turbulence. The entire shape was optimized for surface operation, treating submarine capability as a temporary tactical maneuver rather than the primary operating mode. But nuclear propulsion changed everything. Admiral Hyman Rickover's nuclear reactor promised unlimited underwater endurance. Future submarines would spend their entire operational lives submerged. That meant the hull needed to be optimized for underwater operation, not surface transit. The most efficient submerged shape turned out to be a teardrop, wide in the middle, tapering to points at bow and stern. It was the shape of a whale, or a fish, or an airship moving through air. Natural selection had already discovered this optimal form. Naval architects just needed to prove it worked at submarine scale. USS Albacore was commissioned on August 5, 1953, with a single experimental mission. Validate the teardrop hull concept. She was 204 feet long, 27 feet at her widest beam, displaced 1,500 tons submerged. She carried no weapons, no combat systems, no operational equipment beyond what was needed for testing. Her interior was packed with instrumentation, pressure sensors, acoustic monitors, strain gauges, hydrodynamic measurement devices. Every square foot of hull space that would normally house torpedoes or missiles was dedicated to collecting data about how the submarine moved through water. The first results shocked everyone. During initial speed trials in late 1953, Albacore exceeded 25 knots submerged using relatively modest power from her diesel electric propulsion. This was unprecedented. World War II fleet submarines struggled to reach 20 knots on the surface, burning maximum fuel. Albacore was faster underwater than most submarines could manage on the surface, and she was doing it quietly, efficiently, proving that the teardrop hull wasn't just viable, it was transformational. The Navy immediately classified the performance data and began redesigning every submarine program under development. The Skipjack-class nuclear attack submarines, already in early design stages, were completely reworked around Albacore's hull shape. The George Washington-class ballistic missile submarines adopted the teardrop profile. Every future American submarine would incorporate innovations proven aboard Albacore. 
An unarmed research vessel had just obsoleted the entire existing submarine fleet and defined what all future submarines would look like. But Albacore's influence extended far beyond American submarine programs. Soviet naval intelligence obtained photographs of Albacore during her sea trials and initially dismissed the design as hydrodynamically flawed. Senior Soviet naval architect Yuri Kormelitsyn wrote a classified assessment predicting that Albacore would prove the superiority of conventional submarine design through its inevitable failure. Then, Soviet intelligence started collecting fragmentary evidence that Albacore was dramatically outperforming every prediction. American destroyer escorts couldn't maintain sonar contact during exercises. Acoustic signatures didn't match any known submarine profile. American submarine programs were being reorganized around the new design philosophy. By 1955, Soviet Admiral Sergei Gorshkov, Commander-in-Chief of the Soviet Navy, ordered a complete reassessment. Soviet scientists reviewed their hydrodynamic theory, studied the intelligence on Albacore's performance, and reached an uncomfortable conclusion. Their submarine theory had been fundamentally wrong. The teardrop hull wasn't just viable, it was superior in every measurable way to conventional designs. Gorshkov faced a strategic crisis. The Soviet Union had invested billions of rubles into submarine construction programs based on flawed assumptions. Every boat under construction was obsolete before it reached the water. And the Americans had already built and tested the prototype that proved the concept worked. If you're finding this exploration of how experimental research changed naval warfare compelling, please subscribe to Cold War Chronicles and hit the notification bell. We're uncovering the innovations that won through design rather than combat. Your support helps us preserve these technology stories. The Soviet response was immediate and desperate. Every submarine design bureau received orders to abandon conventional hulls and develop teardrop variants. The November-class nuclear attack submarines were redesigned mid-construction to incorporate teardrop profiles. It was expensive, disruptive, and acknowledged that a single American research submarine had obsoleted Soviet submarine doctrine. Within five years of Albacore's commissioning, every major naval power was copying her design. The British Navy adopted teardrop hulls for their Valiant-class nuclear submarines. The French incorporated the design into their Ruby-class boats. Even nations that had never built submarines studied Albacore's innovations when starting their programs. What made Albacore so influential wasn't just the hull shape, it was the systematic approach to testing. Over 19 years, Albacore underwent multiple major refits, each testing increasingly radical innovations. In 1956, she received contra-rotating propellers, two propellers spinning in opposite directions to cancel out torque and improve efficiency. In 1961, she got X-configuration stern planes, control surfaces arranged in an X pattern rather than the traditional cross configuration, improving maneuverability and reducing flow interference. In 1965, she was fitted with a special polymer skin designed to reduce drag by minimizing turbulence in the boundary layer where hull meets water. Each modification was tested exhaustively. Speed trials at different power settings, maneuverability tests executing precise turns and depth changes, acoustic measurements recording noise signatures at various speeds, efficiency calculations measuring energy consumption versus performance. The data from these tests became the foundation for two generations of submarine design. Every innovation Albacore proved successful appeared in operational submarines. Every failure saved production submarines from expensive mistakes. The crew who served aboard Albacore experienced submarine duty unlike any other. They weren't warriors. They were test pilots. Senior Chief Petty Officer James Mitchell, who served from 1954 to 1957, described the experience. 
We'd run the same speed trial eight times in a day, with engineers adjusting one valve between runs. It was scientifically important, but operationally boring. We joked that we were the only submarine in the Navy that couldn't sink an enemy boat because we didn't have weapons. Turned out we were sinking the entire Soviet submarine fleet, just not the way we expected. The impact on Soviet submarine development was profound and lasting. Soviet designers tried to replicate Albacore's innovations, but struggled with implementation. The teardrop hull required rethinking every internal system. Crew spaces, ballast tanks, control surfaces, everything designed for conventional submarines had to be reconfigured. Soviet boats incorporating rushed teardrop conversions suffered from stability problems, excessive noise, and mechanical failures. American submarines using thoroughly tested Albacore-derived designs were faster, quieter, and more capable. The technological gap widened throughout the Cold War because the Soviets were reverse engineering innovations from incomplete intelligence, while Americans were systematically developing the next generation of improvements. Commander Giuseppe Galliano, who commanded Albacore from 1956 to 1958, later reflected on the submarine's influence. Albacore never hunted enemy submarines or launched missiles, but she contributed more to American submarine superiority than most combat boats. Every innovation we tested, every problem we solved, every improvement we validated became the foundation for operational submarines tracking Soviet boats throughout the world's oceans. The Soviets were copying our five-year-old design. We were inventing what submarines would look like in 20 years. The peaceful nature of Albacore's mission made her influence possible. Combat submarines must prioritize operational readiness over experimental risk. You can't test radical innovations on a boat carrying nuclear missiles or tracking Soviet submarines in hostile waters. But Albacore could take risks. She could test configurations that might fail. She could push systems beyond normal limits. She could explore the boundaries of submarine performance without risking operational missions. This freedom to experiment, to fail safely and learn from failure, produced innovations that transformed naval warfare. By the time Albacore was decommissioned in 1972, her influence had become universal. Every submarine design incorporated her innovations. The teardrop hull was standard. Control surface configurations used her tested arrangements. Propulsion systems adopted her efficiency improvements. Acoustic design followed her noise reduction principles. The experimental submarine that Soviet engineers initially dismissed as hydrodynamically absurd had become the template for every submarine built worldwide. Today, USS Albacore sits as a museum ship in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, preserved next to the shipyard where she was built. The submarine rests on land now, her test days over, but her legacy continues beneath the world's oceans. Visitors walk through her cramped interior, seeing the experimental equipment that changed naval warfare. The teardrop hull that once seemed so revolutionary is now so universal that modern submarine designers can't imagine any other configuration. The radical has become normal. The experiment has become doctrine. Modern submarine designers studying new technologies still reference Albacore's approach. Systematic testing, careful measurement, iterative refinement. When the United States developed the Virginia-class submarines, the most advanced attack submarines in the world, the design team studied Albacore's test methodology. When China began building nuclear submarines in the 1970s, they studied Albacore's published specifications. When India developed their Arihant-class ballistic missile submarines, the hull design traced directly back to principles Albacore validated. The influence extends beyond military submarines. Modern civilian submersibles use teardrop-derived shapes. Underwater research vessels adopt control configurations Albacore tested. Even autonomous underwater vehicles designed for ocean exploration incorporate hydrodynamic principles that Albacore's experiments validated. 
the research submarine that changed naval warfare also influenced every vessel designed to move efficiently underwater. This is the story of USS Albacore and how one experimental submarine changed naval warfare forever without firing a shot. She carried no weapons, but won a technology race. She fought no battles, but defeated enemy submarine forces. She was dismissed as a wasteful experiment, but became the most influential submarine in history. The victories weren't measured in enemy vessels sunk, but in innovations adopted worldwide. The legacy isn't combat ribbons, but technologies that define modern submarines. The triumph was peaceful, but total. If you found this exploration of how experimental research shapes warfare compelling, please subscribe and turn on notifications. The innovations that changed history through design, rather than destruction, deserve to be remembered. Thank you for helping us preserve these stories.